Well, people, here we are with Alex and Janae Evans, pastors of the collective in Jakarta, a happening, thriving church. Welcome, guys. Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. It's so good to be here. It's good to see you, Pastor Phil, and yeah. just get to chat with you. We love it. Yeah. Yeah, well, we had such a good time with that conference that we held in your church recently, and your team were world class. Thanks for hosting us. Yeah, it was an honor for us, and I just love being able to hang out with you and the rest of the C3 Global team. Uh, I mean, it, I told Janae afterwards, it felt kind of like a vacation, even though during the day the conference was tiring, just the conversations and the yeah. dinners, that was so energizing. So yeah. I just felt so refreshed afterwards. You did. You did feel refreshed. You yeah. loved it. You came back after one of the nights out with you, Pastor <laughs> Phil, and he just felt like, man, this is, that was so incredible. And so that made me happy. We had never as a team uh, hosted a conference, anything that big. And so um, it was great because it was a challenge for the team. And so it definitely stretched their capacity. And I felt like that was incredible for them. Yeah, I, I like having big days and big events in local church life because exactly it stretches yeah. everybody. And, uh, and you don't grow without stretching. Yep. And so uh, your church has grown immensely, though. I mean, you took a hit through the pandemic. Not, not too bad, but you've bounced back, right? And uh, yeah. are going pretty strong. Yes. Yeah, we're probably at about... Yeah, praise Jesus. Yeah, praise Jesus. We bounce back. Yeah. Um, uh, I think we're back at about 70, 75% of what we were pre uh, COVID. Um, but in our other locations, like uh, we have a North Campus in Jakarta, that actually has grown. So we it's, it's bigger than it was before COVID in attendance. It has a higher engagement than before COVID. And also uh, in Budapest, it's grown sub- obviously substantially because it started in the middle of COVID. Yeah. So it's it's insane to see what God has been able to do amongst all the craziness that's happening everywhere. Yeah, that's it's God. that's amazing. And uh, and so give us give us the background. You guys came out from America like what ten years ago? Yeah, um, eleven oh. and a half. It's going to be twelve in July. Twelve yeah. years wow. we've been okay. in Indonesia, which is so wild. Because I remember when we first came over, we thought maybe we would be here for a year or two. Yeah, um, we had been working in a church in California, and like we had already been sensing there was some sort of shift. But honestly, it could have been that we were going to move apartments. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we don't, we didn't know. <laughs> Get a new car, <laughs> and then. <laughs> This opportunity, and exactly, and that we kind of had presented and we really prayed and then obviously went to our lead pastors there and they felt like it was God. And so then we yeah. moved over and we came over as the children's pastors of the church here. And it was, wow. yeah, so we were the kids, which honestly, Alex and I, we will do anything, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. we just no, love it. And, and it was, we hadn't been, we had worked in kids ministry. We had never been the kids pastors. I was the youth pastor. Well, no, I had been a kids pastor because when we, we planted a church previously sure, with our yeah. friends and I'm sure you know this, when you plant churches, you just kind of do every job. Completely. Everything. For- First, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like there was a, a, a few months where, yeah, we did, we did kids yeah. ministry together, I yes. think. Yeah. We taught. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. And so I just feel like it was so amazing that time we come over, we thought maybe one or two years, that's kind of, we didn't ever like say it, but that's kind of what we were yeah. thinking. And then God, like the kids ministry exploded, the church just kept growing, and we're in a predominantly Muslim country. So it's actually the largest Muslim country in the world, if you look at population wise, in the world, right? And so to see what God was doing uh, in this place, in this city, in the country, it was so amazing. And so then it just was like, we, we couldn't see leaving. We loved getting to to be a part of what God was doing. And then our lead pastor at that time had moved us into different positions. Um, and we just got to be a part of this beautiful thing. And we just kept thinking, this is, oh God, I can't believe it was never on our radar. So yeah, it was never right. something we were planning to do from the time we were married or before. And then we just got to be a part of this beautiful thing. So good. And, and is, is this the same church or did you launch out and start a new one? This, this is, is the, the same, same church. church. So yeah. that when we got here, the church was two and a half years old. 
Um, and it was great and it was, it was, it was healthy and it was a new church, you know, um, and it had been planted by another church in Jakarta. Yeah. Um, and then just watching everything that God has done, watching it grow, watching it change, watching it develop. It's just been like a privilege. So when we stepped into the role of lead pastors and transitioned, it didn't feel like, oh, we're being handed somebody else's thing. It felt like, I mean, we were like the big brothers and the sisters of the, you know right. what I mean? So we, we were there helping the culture develop yeah. and seeing the shifts and seeing all those things. So we just felt like we were able just to continue to run with what God had already been doing. And so the church really seemed to take off after you guys took it on, right? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well we, we took it. Yeah, I mean, praise the Lord. But also six months after we took it on is when COVID hit. No, not even six right. months. Well, it officially three months. three months, but six months yeah. the lead pastor left on sabbatical and then he sure. came back for a couple of weeks and then he left uh, officially. Um, so because I don't know, Pastor Phil, if Alex told you this, because I wasn't out with you guys all the time, but uh, that we actually, so beginning of 2019, we, we had already been praying about planting a church in Europe, right? And it was a conversation, ongoing conversation with the lead pastors at that time. We were very close to them, loved them. And so it was for years, right? And mm. and so we finally felt like it was like time. And so we go in at the beginning of 2019 to have this conversation yeah. with um, the lead pastors at that time. And in that conversation is when they said, actually, we want to leave and we want you guys huh to take over wow. the church. And so we were like, wait, I mean, okay, only because that wasn't quite on the radar. We weren't thinking they were leaving. And then we were like, did we get it wrong? Like, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but I really, I just believe like we had seen a glimmer, a glimpse of what God was leading us into. Um, but it, he was making it bigger than what it was going to be, right? Because then we weren't starting. And obviously God knew about the pandemic that, that was coming. We didn't. And so we stepped into, we prayed about it and stepped into that role. And then in 2020, during, we planted the Europe campus. campus. Right. We weren't on right. the ground. Right. So. You know, uh, God is known by quite a few names, El Shaddai and... Uh, you know these these various names, Rafa, and uh, but I have another name that I haven't seen in scripture, but El Sneaky is uh, <laughs> he's he's so sneaky, right? He tells you, yeah, hey, we want you to go over there to be kids church people. Aha, uh -huh, you're going to be the senior pastor here, and then you go, oh, we're going to be the senior pastor, and then COVID comes. My Lord, it is it's like one one thing after yeah. another, and and uh, the Bible. You know, it says there are mysteries. Yeah. Uh, there's a whole bunch of mysteries. Some of them are explained, but a lot of them are not. And so you just go to the gear of trust, right? You, when yeah. you don't know what's happening, you can't grasp everything that's going on. You don't fully understand why God is doing this or that. It's the mysteries, the mysteries of God. And, and, and even, even speaking in tongues is like speaking in mysteries, and yeah. we get to understand some of the mysteries mm -hmm. by interpreting that and getting a, a sense of understanding of, of these things. In fact, the Old Testament prophets certainly did that. But you guys have definitely been in the middle of a miracle, the middle of a mystery, yeah. the middle of an unfolding of an amazing work of God right there in, in the collective. No, Pastor Phil, that's so good because before in earlier years of ministry, I definitely can say that like in my life, clarity was like a huge idol, right? Like I thought that everything <laughs> needed to be clear. And, and then of course, in, in, in my pride, I make excuses for it. I'm like, no, we need leadership with clarity. We need this, we need this. And now I, I'm like, there's no clarity. <laughs> there is like only mystery. And it's just like in that, just like what you said, that constant gear of trust to say, God, I'm okay with not knowing what it's going to look like. Just tell me what to do today. Just give right. me the wisdom to make the right decisions to obey today. And whatever it looks like five years from now, that's awesome. I'm excited, but I'm more, way more consumed with what I'm supposed to be doing right now in this season. And that is a great burden off my yes. shoulders, I feel like. And there's just so much more freedom in that. Oh, yeah. I think, I think you got to have... 
a few gears in the gearbox for your Christian life. And reverse is definitely one of them. But when you're in a mystery, you don't want to find that gear of reverse. You, want, you just want to actually, if, if you can't go forward, just go neutral. And, uh, and, and, but <clears throat> knowing, being multidimensional in, in, in our trusting zones, I think is really important so that we're not just one dimensional. If it doesn't happen one way, then we're done. You know, it can't be God, but God has a multitude of ways that he fulfills his purpose. And I love that so much. One thing, and we didn't really know how true it was going to like be going into it, but I remember we, so we went and we took some time, not even that long a time, but we did take some time away to really pray um, if, if this was for us to step into this. And so we prayed and I remember we were kind of mapping stuff out and we, we were praying separately, coming together different. And one of the things that I remember talking to Alex about, I just said, if, if we're doing this, I don't want to lead out of fear. Yeah. I don't want to lead because I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of what the congregation or if people are going to leave or if this, like if God, I want to do due diligence mm. And get before God. And if I, whether it's one little step or it's a a clear path, because sometimes he only gives you one piece of clarity, right? It's like the next step and it's not anything else. And so whatever that looks like, I want to do it. I want us to lead fearlessly and take the step and believe that if God said it, we've done the due diligence, we've heard his voice, what we believe is his voice. And then we step out and he is, if he said it, He's going to provide what needs to do. And so stepping into it, we knew transition would be hard, right? Mm-hmm. Because we had actually been a part of different transitions, but we, we didn't see COVID coming. And so I feel like we <laughs> went back over and over. We will not lead out of fear in that when everything was changing weekly, daily, moment by moment, it's like this, this, and I, you know, it was one of those things where it's like, God, you put this on our heart. You reminded us of that. Yeah. We, we said Amazing. this is how we would lead and we wouldn't lead out of fear yeah. because you know, in COVID everyone's writing emails. It's like anything sure. you did was like, no, that's not being safe. No, you should be there. I'm it, 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 there yeah. was so much. Are your right? cameramen so, wearing masks? So, it's like yeah. everything, everything <laughs> was like, and so everyone had a lot of opinions and, and, a, lot of fear. and a lot of fear. Yeah. And God had to trump all of those voices. Yeah. And, and, yeah. If I hear the word, during that time, we all heard the word pivot a lot, right? It was like, if I heard the word pivot one more time, I'm like, we're pivoting. But I think (laughs) God, we we were doing things different because that's, it needed to be done. We had to, we had to be inventive. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, something that uh, Alex said to me when when I was there was, I found really interesting because I've met a lot of missionaries and I'm not sure if you classify yourselves in that because you've come out from America, you've worked for the Lord and p- helped plant a church and grow a church in Jakarta. In my view, it's it's not really the missionary mindset, though, that I saw in you guys, like thinking, well, we go home for three months a year on furlough and we come out here and this is our mission field. Alex said to me, I I don't even sort of look forward to going back to America. I'm, I'm I just love being here. And I think that attitude is is so amazing for the local people to know that their pastor is not just visiting as though it's some hard done by mission yeah. journey. It is actually a love for the place so much that I'm not even thinking that America's like home anymore. Can you speak into that, Alex? Like. Mm. Yeah, uh, you made it sound so beautiful, Pastor Phil. <laughs> uh, I you think, really are, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think it's more just that, like, I I don't like change. Like, you right. know, I don't know if you're like this, like, like if you're driving to a restaurant with your wife and there's been a decision on where you're going to eat, and then halfway through, there maybe there's a change in that decision of where you're going to eat. I don't know what it does to you, but it drives me up the wall. I'm like, we made up our minds. We know what we're going for burgers. So, That's a leader. That's yeah, a leader. Same thing. Like, so if I'm in Jakarta, I'm in Jakarta. I'm not thinking about what else. It's the same thing when I go to Budapest. When I go to Budapest, I take my golf clubs. I set up hangouts with my friends that I made there when I'm visiting. I just want to be there. 
I don't want to think about what I'm going to do when I get back or this or that. I just want to be there because I don't, so good. I don't like those. I, I, I'm not flexible. I'm just like, this is what Jesus is doing right now. I'd rather just be here and just rest yeah. and relax, you know? Um, and it, it does. I love, I love being here in Jakarta. I love the people here yeah. and I've seen what God wants to do here. So, right. I don't know if you've ever seen a bumper sticker on the back of some cars. Wish I was you know, sailing, wish I yeah. was horse riding yeah. and here they are in the car. But man, to be present wherever you are gives great meaningfulness to your yeah. whole life. And people can tell who are talking yeah. to you if you've got that look in your eye, oh, I don't want to be here. I don't even want to have this conversation. And nobody's going to grow a large church wishing they were somewhere else. Nobody's yeah. going to actually be impactful for God if you're, if you're going to be always hankering after somewhere else. In fact, God told the Israelites when they got deported down to Babylon, he said, hey, build houses, plant vineyards, be there. Don't be wishing you're coming back home ne next week because it's going to be 70 years that you're down there. I'm not saying that to you guys, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like he was just saying, be yeah. where you are. Let 100% of yourself take root. In, in the situation. I think that's a really big key. Tell us, tell us some things that are happening in the collective. I mean, you've got three locations, as I understand it. You might, you might correct me on that. Budapest and North Jakarta and where you are in Jakarta. Yeah. Uh, and, and we're also kicking, kind of rolling now in, in Bali. We, we're doing two worship nights a month starting in Easter. Oh, good. And there's, we have out, we have an incredible outreach ministry there with some connect groups. Mm -hmm. Um, also, so that's, that's rolling. Uh, it's probably just a little bit behind Budapest, I would say. Um, I would say one thing that I, we feel like God has been speaking to us right now is more long-term homes for all of our locations. Right. Right. Uh, like, what does it look like to secure assets, not for sec the sake of securing assets, but to help people see like, hey, this is this is a long term plan. Right. And this is something we're going to build over time. This is a marathon, not a race. Right? right. And I think a lot of our leaders are younger. So there is that tendency to just sprint it and then be like, OK. But then there's that exhaustion and there's that like, sometimes they feel like, oh, I'm so kind of burnt out, which burnout is crazy. You know what I mean? And it's like, so they yeah. feel this way. But I, I think this year it's more of a, a restful marathon where we're saying, hey, let's make greater decisions to really put it down deeper roots, uh, secure some assets in different locations and really make a long lasting imprint on the communities that we're in. Whether it's in South Jakarta, North Jakarta, Budapest, or Bali, we want to be able to say, "No, we're here for we're here for good, and we're here to serve." Right? That's so. fantastic. Yeah, I'm believing with you, praying for that. Yeah. That's going to happen. You'll have buildings in Jesus' Amen. name. Yes. Amen. And uh, and in terms of the the Bali uh, two, two two nights a month worship. For us, Indonesia has seen a lot of growth in the last few yeah. years so that now it's its own region. We made it its own region with Joshua and Sunita Winata uh, overseeing that area. And so, yeah. and we're so thankful for you guys being able to like host a conference and look after that. But I would think that within the next few years, we will see a massive revival yeah. and move of God yeah. through Indonesia. It has had huge moves of God in the past. And I don't think anything is going to stop a great wave of the Holy Spirit bringing revival and planting so many more churches yeah. right around that country. And you guys are going to be a big part of that without any shadow of a doubt, raising yeah. up leaders, training leaders, training teams. Uh, your church is going to become a central apostolic hub for sending out so many people around Indonesia. Yeah, I believe it. Amen. Come on, keep going. Don't stop. <laughs> Keep it up. No, I completely agree, man. Like when people ask us, because from the outside, they see the 98% Muslim population, right? And for right. me, we just see dry bones. Right. Because even the whatever faith people come from, it's dead faith, right? right? So they're hungry for something real. They're hungry for something authentic. So it isn't about like, oh, isn't it so hard coming up against these things? It's no, it's fertile soil. It's not exactly. hard. The hearts want something alive. 
Exactly. So I absolutely believe it's this time. It's yeah. this, it's this generation. It's going to happen. And it's not even going to be this, like, I don't know. I don't want to like, but it's not going to be this sacrificial work. It's going to be this beautiful move of God where he just moves. And we all stand back and say, Oh my gosh, we can't believe that this happened in this generation. Exactly. Exactly. The, the, the readiness of a field is, is not so much in the field. It's in us. It's in our perspective. Cause Jesus says, Hey, you, a lot of people say, yeah, four months and then comes the harvest. He's don't say that. They'll yeah. say that the field's hard and it's not ready. Lift up yeah. your eyes, get a new perspective. Mm. The fields are already white. And at any given time, I would say there's 25% of the population of any country is ready to receive Jesus. Amen. All they need is somebody to handle them correctly, Amen. bring them to Christ, speak to them about their, their world. Uh, because you got that one in four of the seeds that worked, you know, and, yeah. and I, that's why I think. At any given time, 25% of your country is ready right now to receive Jesus Amen. or to come back to the Lord. And all we need is a perspective that sees the harvest the way Jesus sees it. Amen. Oh, yeah, so I love it. That's it, baby. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and in Indonesia- so- yeah, what were you going to say? No, no, I was going to say, in terms of the future for your church, the collective, uh, just let me ask this, though, while, we're, while I think of it. How do people find uh, the collective in Jakarta? If there are people watching this, they're in Jakarta or in Indonesia or visiting Jakarta, what do they do? Oh, yeah, I love that. Um, well, well, most right now how people find us usually is honestly through Google. People Google yeah. English Church or International right. Church in Jakarta, they find us. Right. Um, coming in from the outside. If they're coming in from the outside. I would say, because I'll ask this all the time. I mean, that's the thing. Post-COVID, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of churches have experienced this. It's like so many new people. And so I'm always, I, I meet new people every, every Sunday, every, or, or different events. And so I'm always asking them, like, how did, how did you find us? Yep. Like, right. And now, more often than not before, pre-COVID, it was People would be like, oh, like a, a friend had invited me. They kept, they were talking about it. I was like seeing them and like a change in them. It was it was that way. A lot now people will be like my explore page on Instagram. Oh, Instagram. <laughs> I don't know how many times I hear wow. my explore page. And so putting that out to everyone and I'm sure, that, you know, yeah. everyone that's on those comms teams at church is looking at the analytics um, and seeing like what's working. But when you ask those questions, like, for us, a lot of it within Indonesia would would be that people see and a so, page, right? Right, and and it would be at the collective or at TC at, at TC Jakarta. Yeah, at TC Jakarta. At, at yeah. TC Jakarta, and you'd be at Alex Evans and at at, at, P, at P Alex Evans. Yeah, and I'm P. just Ale- at Janae Evans. Yeah, but a, a lot mm. of it, it's it's there's a lot. The hard thing with with com- communications or what do you think of social media? It's just so flooded, but I just, it really, a picture can strike someone, right? Oh, a, yeah. A, yeah. A, a one thing to say. And so obviously for, for all those comms teams, just an encouragement, like what you're putting out there it works. when we yeah. think intentionally, like what is this speaking and um, right. like everything we put out that it would give life. Yeah. Yes. Speak to that mystery that Pastor Phil was talking about. You may not know what about an image affects you and how it touches your heart, but there's something there. And I feel like there's there's so much trust in saying, okay, this is the image for whatever reason that represents us. And we believe that's going to be effective. And then people see it and they just go, there's something different here. And I think the Holy Spirit uses that so many times. Totally. Man, that's that's a great statement because if you could, I mean, it's one thing to find words that describe your culture and that evokes an image in people's minds, but actually to put an image of what your culture is all about. And I love that. I love just seeing two people hugging or a group of people praying together yeah. and, and you put that picture there and that can strike someone in the heart. You know, uh, this Jesus Revolution movie has come out recently and on it, in it, there's this picture, time uh, cover picture with Jesus on it. I remember seeing that in New Zealand when I was 18, 19 years old. Mm. I just saw that and it spoke to me. Mm. It said, you need to meet him. 
Wow. You, you need this person. And, and, awesome. and it was just a it, – it, I only saw that image maybe for two seconds. And – and God spoke to me through that. I ended up in a church in the Jesus Revolution, getting saved in 1971. And, you know, for the last 52 years, I've been following Christ from that moment. And like yeah. you say, one image can reach a person through the whole flood. Uh, even, if, even if we can think, you know, we can think like, oh, where are we going to get heard on the Internet? Mm. Even if you reach just one person, it can yeah. could be Billy Graham. It could change yeah. the world. Completely. Even if what you are saying is, I mean, somebody said to me, how do we cut through all the voices? I said, well, don't try. Just do yeah. your thing because nobody else has lived your life and your story is unique and mm. your story is needed by someone out there and they're going to hear it. And, uh, oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's no, so good. Exactly. And so so beautifully put. I feel like, I don't know, as leaders, and maybe this was more before, because I feel like it is maybe not as popular to be a, a, a pastor or up front or whatever right now in the world. But um, just that idea, because I feel like before it was like, who's who, you know what I mean? Like trying right. to be the one. Um, but like you said, just own your space. Like yeah. who, yes. who are you and be that. And whether it's, it's anything, like do it like it is, you know what I mean? Like you have Perfect. been called to that thing. And I, and I, I really think that that's what, and people respond to that. And that's so much more yeah, restful. Yeah. So much yes. more restful. More. So and much try, more try peaceful. To, yes. the yeah. We've definitely seen, I don't know how much time we have left, but um, <laughs> About five minutes. Okay. <laughs> but in Budapest, because uh, that was, I mean, <laughs> this is what's so, I feel like sometimes is it, is it like God sends us to the, to the hard places? I don't know. Like people would be like, uh, but um, Budapest, hard. yeah, Budapest? the seemingly hard. Because yeah. hungry, like people, it, it is a, a, a tough. Shout out to the Hungarians. Place. Yeah. We, you don't smile. <laughs> you don't smile. Why don't Hungarians smile? Oh my goodness. They're the most beautiful. I think just like when we came here, um, you know, yeah, it may not be the most beautiful city, Jakarta, if anyone's ever been there, but in every place There's looking beauty. and finding the beauty, There's beauty, you know what I mean? And, and Jakarta people, it's, they're just beautiful. Like the way that family, how open they are. And, and that's incredible in, in Hungary, they've gone through a lot of different things. You know, right. I think they're, I mean, a lot of things. And so they kind of wear it. You know what I mean? Yes. Like they don't trust. They're not giving you a smile. And they're like, why are you smiling at me? You know what I mean? Like just that, have that thing. But if, if they see that you keep coming back, that that love is genuine. Right. Um, I know before when I grew up, it was really like, come, we're going to do something at the church. Come, you know what I mean? And then when yes. they come in those doors, but really I think the approach and I, and I see this, it's not like just us, but we say it a lot that we're going to meet people where they're at. And so totally. be right there on the street, I'm going to give you just as much love. If you never come to my church, right? When, right. I, when I'm out at this restaurant, when I'm here and here, I'm going to pour it out because obviously I'm receiving that kind of love Ooh. from God and meet you where there, and you could sit there and, and be on your journey in your process. But that's what we've seen in Budapest where people will be like, man, this, it's really hard here. Um, but it's been so good. incredible. Yeah. It's grown so yeah. fast because we were, you know, at the events dancing with the people we're here, we're here, like just right. in life and loving people right there where, you know, they're so good now and they're like I just want to be around in that and so as their process goes you know maybe it's at a hangout that we have just these hangouts doing all kinds of stuff so people are right. like I know about Jesus but I like hanging out with you or going yeah. to those and then maybe maybe they're like maybe I'll go to a connect group because you guys are having that and I like being around you mm. right or maybe I'll go to a worship night I was just there yeah. uh, two and a half weeks ago yeah, Three you just got back ago. two and a half weeks ago. Um, Budapest, in right. world, yeah, in Budapest, in this working with the team, and it was beautiful because every time I go, there's new people, and you know, just people being Fantastic. added to the team of all. I love it, Janae. You know, yeah. there's a scripture that says, "He first loved us," and somebody's got to do the first love. Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, somebody's got to break the cycle of, I mean, hate, 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 and then somebody says, "Well, he first loved us, and therefore." 
we love him. And I think the church has got to adopt that attitude. We are going to be the first who yeah. show love. Even if we're hated, if we're criticized, we're persecuted, whatever, we're still going to show love. And uh, yes. you guys are doing a brilliant job of that. We're so proud of you. And uh, thank God for you all the time. And can't wait to see you again, you know, in person. Uh, and, yes. And yeah, we can wait. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Probably not be next sometime. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thanks for being on this podcast with us and uh, C3 Global people. Uh, pray for Alex and Janae in Jakarta. If you want to go visit them, you'll yeah. find them easily. And it, it is one of the great churches of the world today. We love uh, being with you and fellowshipping with you. God bless you. We'll see you soon. See you. Thank you.